All right. Um, sorry you had to see three and a half seconds of that. I don't know what went over me, but I filmed the intro in portrait mode. So I was just editing and then I saw it. And I'm sorry about that. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll just re-record the intro. <laughs> my, 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 what an ace. All right, so today I got my hands, well, yesterday, I got my hands on the KWA T6 Ronin. Here it is in all its glorious form with a crap red dot I found. And you might notice for the very sharp eyed, there's something different about this gun. And that is because exactly 30 minutes after I finished recording the review, I upgraded it. So this gun is no longer stock. I also noticed that I forgot to show you the shooting test. So you'll just have to take my word for it. It's very good. But uh, enjoy the show. <laughs> All right guys, let's start out the review like we do with a unboxing. So this is the uh, KWA Ronin T6, or uh, as they like to call it, the Ronin Tac T call. Uh, and I wanted to get this because I wanted something that was like CQB ready, small form factor, PDW. And I've been interested in the T-Series uh, ever since it came out with the TK45 and TK45Cs because they seem to be really great performers out of the box, as in like possibly one of the best weapons to drop in 2020. And uh, I wanted to get a look at it for myself and I heard that this uh, AEG 2.5 gearbox system was compatible with upgrades, so why not give it a shot? So obviously, let's get to the unboxing. Uh, just an inauspicious sort of cardboard box, nothing fancy. A couple of markings here and there, but uh, and a reminder that this is not a real firearm. That's good to have. But obviously, what's inside is what counts. And what we have is Seemingly a very minimalist packing design, just first impressions wise, but this foam does seem to be pretty high quality. Like, it's not that flamingo sort of styrofoam thing, it's, it's more squishy than that, which means it can absorb impact a lot better. And it's encasing the gun itself. So, yeah, no damage to shipping should really happen here. That's really nice, that's a good detail. A lot of companies actually care about the shipping material, which is a bummer. Um, but yeah, so let's just get this out. Oh, and tucked away on the right side here is uh, our KWA magazine. So these KWA magazines, I believe, are made in collaboration with PTS, and the influence is pretty obvious. Like, it's meant to look like an EPM mag. Uh, one thing I noticed that's missing is the little, the PTS have a little window here where you can see the first BB you load sort of appear when the magazine is full. Super nifty feature. This obviously does not have that. Let's see, I uh, got a little warning. Make sure to press down magazine follower before inserting into the gun. That's good if it is a, no, it doesn't appear to be an extended follower, but you know, it can wiggle out uh, somehow. So yeah, it's good that you don't break that. Uh, and it's not orange, which it is on the PTS ones. So just a standard black follower, KWA marking. Seems like a nice magazine, nice polymer. Doesn't seem very flexible. Seems, uh, seems like a solid Mac. And obviously, the gun itself. Oh, let's get that out. Okay, so the gun itself, first impression seems pretty high build quality, you know? It's got your KWA markings, which I don't know. I They've been over the top before. This is actually a lot more subdued than I've, what I've seen with other KWA, so credit where credit is due. Uh, but it seems to have nice build quality, like just first impressions, super solid receiver and upper weld there's like no wobble uh the gun itself yeah the only thing that wobbles is the charging handle here so it i mean it seems super good and it's got a couple of pts parts that we're going to go over uh with uh, the overview itself but yeah it seems solid doesn't appear to have taken damage in shipping so that's good and then finally we have our little bag of goodies here we got let's see uh some paperwork a manual Oh, a huge bonus here. So they have a parts diagram. This is called an exploded diagram. These are amazing. Uh, if something breaks, each part has a number and a corresponding uh, like product code, which is up here. And then when you're contacting KWA and you want something replaced or you want to buy something new, like let's say 
let's say this little spring for the actual uh, magazine release got missing and you want to order that well then you know okay well is this part this is the weapon number and then I just need to inform them that I need the 384 part and then they'll hopefully send it to you so that's awesome great job by KWA to include these not a lot of companies do this other than that it's just yeah standard mode of, of operation newbie stuff how to all that pretty standard stuff uh, let's see what else we got here we got a tool for the uh, adaptable performance I think they call it it's essentially a tool you can use to turn up and down your FPS by a, a certain margin so it's cool that they include that and they just don't expect you to have a long Allen wrench that's awesome so good on them um, yes M-Lock to Picatinny adapters, two piece. That is awesome. So many companies do go over to M-Lock now, which is great, but they don't include these or they sell them separately or they include one. Obviously one is worse than the other, but I think it's awesome that they include two fresh out the box mounting tools as well. So if you have lights or lasers or hand guards that are Picatinny, you can mount them to your gun, no problem. That's awesome. Little uh, thank you for purchasing KWA, missing part of repair, phone number. It's pretty cool. American number, so probably can't use this in the EU, which is unfortunate, but they are active on Facebook, so you can just contact them through there. And a KWA sticker for, I guess this is gonna go on my, uh, on my tech cabinet. That's awesome. And yeah, that's the rest of it. So obviously a very minimalist design and packaging. I don't mind that as long as it's protective enough and uh, well, you've had enough of watching my hands move around. So uh, let's get to the overview. All right, guys, welcome to the overview. So like we do with the other reviews, we're gonna go tip to butt and we're gonna start with this flash hider muzzle device. Uh, it's different. It's definitely got a different look to it, more aggressive stylings and curves. I like this more than I like like a standard birdcage, uh, but obviously, and this is a great part, if you don't like it, it is 14 millimeter counterclockwise threading, so you can place whatever kind of muzzle device you want on it, if it's silencers or tracers or whatever you want. Uh, so moving on down, right here actually is the first kind of bonus and the first uh, notice that this is from PTS as in these iron sights are actually made by PTS. They're designed by PTS. They're very a little tight, but very clicky, very affirmative click when they go into position. Sight picture is pretty open uh, with, an uh, with an available sort of accuracy dial. So if you wanna dial it in even further, you can click up this little device and that'll let you sort of aim better, I suppose. Never use iron sights, don't know why you would. We have tracers in airsoft and you can at most shoot like 70, 80 meters with an AG. So it's pretty easy to hit stuff anyway. Right, so moving down with the handguard itself. This is an M-Lock handguard and they've slimmed it down as much as possible to still keep that sort of PDW form factor. Uh, the only bottom Picatinny rail is this little bit at the front, which I have no idea why they made. Um, I don't know what kind of attachments you would put down here. If you're putting a foregrip here, you're sort of a madman. Maybe you could put like an angled foregrip on it with the mount up in front and the rest of it would sort of sit here, but then it would float off. And it's just weird. I mean, I guess they do it for the aggressiveness of the styling. You could put like a single Picatinny unit uh, hand stop. So you could have like a little finger stop there to index better. But the grip itself is super slim, really nice to index. Even with my uh, huge mittens, I'm having a pretty comfortable grip on this. And I can see people with smaller hands don't necessarily need to C-clamp this and could still hold on pretty well. So that's awesome. Picatinny rail on the top. And this is a cool detail. Uh, they actually narrowed in and sort of cut lightning holes in the top uh, Picatinny because they wanted to save some weight. And I think that's a great detail to go by. Uh, it's a little extra milling work. It's obvious, I think it's been done great. And I think it's a great idea to, to reduce some weight on the handguard. And uh, moving on further down, the receiver itself is made out of metal. Nice powder coated black metal. Uh, I think this is like midnight black or something like that. Standard uh, M4 coloring, if you ask me. KWA marking on the side, nothing fancy, nothing like a crazy detailed design work or anything like that. Just as KWA, 
and the Ronin, which is what the series is from. And then the low receiver, and this is where the T6 sort of separates itself from the rest of the uh, Ronin family. So this is the T6, which is the uh, 556 version, AKA it takes uh, M4 Max, oh, a little extended follower. Uh, it takes M4 Max, specifically it takes these uh, KWA style PTS EPM mags. Uh, and then you have stuff like the TK45, which is obviously a certain uh, vector look-alike, I suppose you could say, which takes vector style magazines, these like stick, Glock looking magazines and then you have the QRC which is the 9mm version of this exact gun so it's almost exactly the same gun except it takes an MP5 style banana 9mm mag. Uh, I chose the uh, 5.56 version because I have EPM1 mags, uh, M4 mags and I thought why go out and buy extra mags when I have the ones that I have and it's pretty much the same gun. I will say that the nine millimeter version of this gun is probably the sexiest of the lineup in, in my humble opinion. So it was out of practicality that I chose the uh, 556 version of the gun. Uh, so controls are semi ambidextrous. We have a single sided mag release. So it's only accessible from the left side of the firearm. Uh, but we do have a um, ambidextrous selector. So selecting can happen from both sides of the weapon. Curve trigger, not very fancy standard M4 curve trigger. Would I have liked them to use a straight pull trigger for this? Yeah, but I mean, curve's got some old school cool about it. And it is a nice enlarged uh, sort of trigger guard itself. So you can index at the very tip of it and still get those juicy speed taps off. Again, uh, PTS rear sights and a charging handle, sort of like a Raptor style charging handle. Very fancy, doesn't ambidextrous charging handle, don't know why you would care if it's ambidextrous or not. Pulling back the charging handle, you reel the hop up. Hop up itself is proprietary, uh, but we'll go through that with the internal overview. And this is probably my favorite part of the gun, right? PTS freaking pistol grip. Awesome aggressive grip angle super almost vertical grip angle, really allows you to index well on the gun. And PTS have always made high quality materials and they're showing their stripes here with this awesome pistol grip. Really, really glad the KWA got this working with them because I love this pistol grip. This is probably one of my favorite grips of all time. This is amazing. Um, moving on further back, we have the tanker style stock. So this is a PDW tanker stock and for you guys who don't know what that means it means that it's a skeletonized extendo stock essentially it doesn't fold to the side or anything but unlike stuff like the arp9 or 556 which is probably one of its closest competitors uh, this thing has three positions so it's got the obviously the fully braced semi and fully which is awesome because i have pretty long arms but i like to shoulder my weapons pretty highly and sometimes this full extended brace, it's too much. Like this is pretty much the size of a normal M4. So why not just run a, a, a standard stock, right? But this middle position actually allows you to still retain some of that shortness and having uh, a very sturdy shooting position still. So that's awesome. Back of this uh, huge tube is your battery compartment, which you will reveal by simply pulling down this tab and sort of removing the cover of the battery compartment. This isn't as huge as you might think. You might think that it goes all the way to here and that's a huge battery compartment, but actually it isn't. Half of this space is occupied by the rear uh, buffer itself. And then the gun wires to Tamiya through a fuse. And this is a pet peeve of mine, I hate Tamiya. I think to me as a lousy connector and I wish, I wish, I wish more airsoft manufacturers would just use Deans or T-plugs uh, immediately in their guns so we could get rid of this horrible adapt or the horrible, horrible connector because it breaks, it snaps, it loses connections, lots of resistance. It's bad for your gun. I, I don't like them. And then obviously running Deans or T's, you would also avoid a fuse. So a lot more space in there for batteries as well. So I definitely will be wiring this to Dean's. Um, so overall, really impressed with the external overview. I think this is a fantastic gun, super high indexing, really narrow, lightweight, M-lock grip, 
really like the uh, externals of this gun. So, on to the internal review. There are a few things I would like to point out about the upper itself. Firstly is the actual barrel assembly and hop. So as you can probably tell if you have any idea how a V2 box works, this is not a stock V2 hop up unit. It's flatter, it's one piece, it has a longer feed tube according to KWA. I have not heard or seen reviewers uh, piss on this specific hop up itself. So. I mean, it'll probably work fine. A lot of modern hops are actually pretty good so far. So the only reason why you maybe want to upgrade is if you have an older gun, which maybe doesn't have that great of a hop up unit, or you want something like an inline tracer or something fancy like that. But this hop up unit, according to reviews, pretty well. 185 millimeter inner barrel made out of brass. Sort of had a look inside and doesn't have the best coating. So I probably will be switching this out for something like a PDW or a CI or a Lambda, depends on what I have in my box. Uh, and then a huge question out there to the entirety of the KWA manufacturing line, which I'm sure is watching this video. Why? Why did you mount the charging handle to the top of the gearbox? I mean, I get it, it's a secure system and it means this won't bend or break if you insert it wrong, sure, but why not just do like everybody else and mount this to the upper and remove it in one piece? Because I can already tell right now with this spring system and this alignment and this spring system that if when I need to open up this box, it's gonna be a pain. So just, you know, be considerate. Internally, in that pornographic pistol grip, the gun boasts a KWA high torque motor, which is 21 TPA. 21 TPA not being the fastest thing in the world, so you're not gonna expect a very high RPM count, but it's definitely going to produce some very nice snappiness in semi. So bonus for that one. This is a huge plus for KWA. A lot of guns boast a quick change spring system, which is essentially where your spring guide can be disassembled from the actual gearbox itself, but without opening up the gearbox, which is great and all, but it still means you need to actually get your gearbox out of the weapon itself. But KWA has what I like to call a true quick change spring system, much like the Ares Amoebas, where the actual spring guide for the variable performance system, which we'll go over in a bit, actually just presses down, twists, and there you go. That's the entire spring of your gun. And now the gearbox is what I like to be called disarmed. So now it won't just blow up in your face when you're trying to open it and shims going everywhere. Ah! So internally, the gun uses uh, nine millimeter ball bearings, which is well, good or bad, depending on how you look at it. But it's something to be wary of if you ever want to switch out those ball bearings for something else. Personally, I think the gears rotate great without it. So I wouldn't necessarily need to upgrade it. Uh, there is a tip hole cylinder system, which uh, I don't know, that seems kind of wrong for me because the PDW barrel is 184 millimeters. So I probably would have gone with something like a half hole, uh, something more designed for that barrel length itself. Uh, the piston is a plastic rack piston. So not the most durable thing in the world. Uh, nice flat sort of aluminum cylinder head which seems to hold up fine. Air seal on this system seems to be pretty good as you'll see from the Chrono results. And as you can probably tell, this box is a little different from a standard V2, a lot shorter. And obviously it doesn't have any uh, sort of mounts or anything to hold a spring guide in place because that's part of the Vario performance system. So it's a bit cut off in the end here. Dimensions are a bit different as well, as well as screw holes, so that's something to bear in mind of. And this is actually a big positive. The anti-reversal latch is located on the right side and has its own little deep mounting hole. So it won't sort of spring up in your face under tension uh, when you're trying to close up the gearbox. I like that a lot. Uh, trigger itself is a standard uh, sort of slide operated um, contact switch, which uses the proprietary switch life extender system, which gives it apparently, according to KWA, the quadruple semi trigger response and also elongates the life of the motor itself. Now, although the dimensions of this box is different, Titan uh, has come out as well as KWA to say that this is drop-in capable for the Titan uh, lineup. So that's the Aster, the Advanced, and the Basic. 
So I'm probably gonna put a gate advanced in this as well as replacing this cylinder with a full cylinder because I am going to DSG it. Uh, so this uh, 18 to one geared uh, setup is going to be switched out with an SA SHS uh, nine to one, which is essentially just an 18 and one sector gear, but with two sectors. So it shoots twice as fast. Um, they are, there is a couple of proprietary things inside the gearbox itself. The gears, V2, the bearings, 9mm V2, uh, the anti-reversal latch, V2 as well, cylinder V2, piston V2, 14 tooth piston, cylinder head, V2 as well. The only proprietary thing is actually the nozzle and the tappet plate. So the nozzle and the tappet plate are a special design that's only custom, like that can only fit inside of this specific gearbox, which is a huge bummer because one of the things that you might actually want to switch often are tappet plates or nozzles. Now, according to KWA, you can actually replace this tappet plate with one that's compatible with old V2 engines, like one specifically they make. So you can fit uh, new nozzles onto it. So although that's a plus, I don't see why they would choose to do this. But according to the chrono results, this system is actually pretty gosh darn airproof from stock. So in my opinion, if you do make something proprietary, at least make it good. And that's what KWA has done. All right, and now on to one of the key performance factors of the KWA Ronin, which is its variable performance system. Essentially what the system does is by inserting the Include a tool into the rear of the Ronin. You can turn it clockwise to increase FPS and turn it counterclockwise to decrease FPS. Now, if you look here, you'll be able to see the results with it all the way down and here with the results all the way up. As you can probably tell on both of them, it's a pretty consistent gun running stock, which I think is incredible. Gun itself, as you can see, can vary in performance from about one joule to like 1.2 joule. So realistically, this variable performance system isn't going to have that big of an impact. Do I really think this system is great? I could see its use case, sure, but I mean, it's not the dumbest gimmick I've seen. It, there are certainly a lot stupider gimmicks in 2020 right now. Huh. And I guess with that, that sort of like rounds up my final thoughts about the weapon. I think it's an awesome, well-built little shooter. I got the 5.56 version because of just the fact that I have a lot of M4 mags, but the other parts of this lineup that boast the same internals are pretty damn sexy. If you can find a TK45C anywhere, I mean, go for it. There's a unique gun for you right there. And if you're more into that nine millimeter look, the QRC is also incredible. They're all boasting the same internals. And personally, I'm looking to upgrade this entire build to be DSG tightened. And then I'm gonna do a sick paint job so it can look exactly like my Glock. So I kind of wanted to do a twin build of gold and black, gold and black. So this is my Psy Agency Arms Glock, which I built myself. And I'm gonna make this uh, T6 look pretty much like it with the same color combinations. So overall, I'm pretty satisfied with what I got right here and I can't wait to see what it can do. Stick around for that updated build video where we're gonna tune the crap out of it and give it a nice paint job. I'm gonna do a build overview of that as well as sort of a how-to on most of it. But uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for checking me out. Thank you so much for watching this review. It probably is a doozy one. Check out my review for the GTP9 if you want to. And remember to subscribe. And with that, peace, guys.